Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, today we're going to be talking about um, how to implement network policy in Amazon EKS. And uh, we'll give an introduction to uh, network policy um, and we'll talk about uh, Calico, which is an open source network policy engine that's uh, embedded within a uh, EKS out of the box. And I'll show a live example and uh, point you to the resources where you can actually run the demo yourself. And so that'll be the, the goal from today is that um, you'll get a little bit of education on how this works and then have the right resources to actually give this a try for yourself. Um, so I'll go ahead and get started. Just, um, <clears throat> you know, one of the things that's changed in the last uh, several years is as we've moved to uh, more monolithic applications to breaking these out into containers and microservices is that um, the network has become a lot more important. And uh, generally in the past, um, what we would do with our more monolithic application is we would uh, typically build a perimeter around it, a firewall. And uh, that would really protect the, uh, all of the traffic. But now that the traffic is actually moving between these microservices, you, you almost have to put somewhat of like a mini firewall around each one of your services. And, and, and this is kind of the direction that um, that security and securing your network and segmenting your network has to go with uh, the new applications. And the good news is that there's some really strong solutions out there on the market that are completely free that will help you do this. Um, so uh, Calico is an open source project that uh, Tigera um, invented and maintains. And, you know, we are uh, big contributors to several open source projects, not just uh, Project Calico, but we contribute to, um, you know, the, the Kubernetes project, to Istio, to Envoy. Um, but, you know, Project Calico, is probably the most widely deployed um, you know, networking and network security solution on the market today, We're running over 150,000 clusters um, and uh, you know, millions of nodes. And it's, um, it's really running, it's embedded in most solutions that are out there in the market. And so this chart uh, in front of you, you know, it doesn't necessarily just mean that we integrate with all of these different components that are out there. It means that they've actually selected Calico and embedded it in um, their solutions. So if you go to a GKE, which we're going to, uh, you know, we're going to talk about EKS today, but if you go to GKE or AKS, you'll find that Calico is embedded in those as well. Um, and so a lot of what we talk about is act actually applicable to those platforms as well. So uh, network policy is um, kind of based on these three different um, fundamentals. The first is that it's label based. So within Kubernetes, you can attach a label to your pods. And then um, and based on those labels on your pods, you can um, create a declarative um, file that specifies which pods are allowed to connect to other pods based on their labels. An example is, if we have a label called <clears throat> stage and some pods have a stage of development and some pods have a stage of production, you could create a declarative policy that says things labeled uh, with stage equals development are not allowed to talk to things with stage labeled as production. Um, the network policy engine is also dynamic. And what that means is that um, by really focusing on the labels as you launch pods, um, you know, based on their labels, they get, um, you know, access to the resources that they need. And it's not based on IP addresses. And that's really important is that traditional security tools, the types as you move to production that your security and your network security team may want to implement, are generally based on IP addresses. And it just simply doesn't work for Kubernetes because you're constantly launching pods, you're destroying pods, and you're scaling pods. And so those IP addresses churn quite a bit. So by really focusing on the key value pairs and the labels, we're able to um, have a very kind of dynamic way of doing things. So there are other, um, there are other ways to implement this, um, but Calico is our open source project and, and certainly the most popular, and that's where I'm gonna be focused today. Um, but it is uh, both the CNI as well as um, 
as, as network policy engine, but as a superset of network policy. We'll get into that in a moment. So um, what often happens is, you know, teams, they get started and they're moving very quickly with the Kubernetes deployment and they start near production and they undergo some form of a security review and, and have to start working with the security team. And generally these security teams, uh, you know, large organizations especially, uh, don't know much about Kubernetes or containers. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll question how you're securing it. So they may try to push like a firewall your way, um, which is gonna be uh, pretty challenging to try to deal with that. So um, one way to position this that's very helpful is to say, look, you know, we're using uh, this uh, Calico policy engine, which is really a zero trust network. And zero trust is a buzzword. It's very, very important to the security teams today. Um, it's, it's understood to be a very strong security posture. And this is one way that you should be positioning, um, positioning network policy as you try to move to production if you do experience uh, any bottlenecks with other teams. So why is this zero trust? Well, first it's declarative, um, meaning you're going to whitelist the connections that are allowed. So when you implement this, what you can say is by default, no service is allowed to talk to any other service. And what we do is we white label and we enable those services to connect to each other. Um, and this is uh, automated using policy as code. And then um, you can talk about how, you know, with the high churn environment, it's so dynamic, uh, we're actually able to um, kind of authenticate these individual services and, 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 and get an identity for each service, uh, which no firewall will be able to do anything like this. We can talk about defense in depth as well, which means, um, what we're doing is uh, with Calico, um, it will evaluate the policies, not only at the host layer, but also at the pod. And <clears throat> what that's gonna do is it provides you kind of a deeper level of security in case something happens, like for example, um, your Kubernetes cluster has been compromised or the host has been compromised. You get an additional uh, enforcement point. And then finally, um, you know, this all applies to layer three of the network. So this would be your database connections, um, TCP connections, as well as your layer seven rules for HTTP between microservices. Things like defining, um, you know, which uh, REST endpoint and what web method are gonna be allowed between two services, which again, the firewall is probably not gonna be able to help manage. Um, so these things help kind of create the zero trust posture. And um, these slides will be available if anyone would like to use them. Um, we're also always available to help if anyone's having trouble getting to production um, to help uh, educate your security teams. So a little bit about network policy. Um, so network policy itself is, is um, you know, it's a, it's a core API within Kubernetes. Um, and uh, what we do is, is we're going to be able to define what's allowed to talk to what by the use of labels. And so in this case, what we have is we have um, a pod with role equals DB. So that would be these pods over here. And then we define an ingress rule. So we say that it will allow ingress from pods labeled front end. Okay. Um, and we actually went down to find which specific port as well in this case, um, because if we didn't define this, it would just accept any port from, from that particular app. So what you don't see in here is any rule for this role equals helper. Now what happens is when you apply a network policy in Kubernetes, um, it will immediately kind of, uh, instantiate like a deny all. So, um, if we didn't have this policy in place, this role equals DB would accept any connection. But now that we've defined what ingress is allowed, um, by default, it will start to block ingress from any other service except for what's been defined. So this gets us to kind of that whitelist, um, um, you know, part of the zero trust security, at least privileges model. And this is just base uh, Kubernetes. 
the Calico policy model is uh, basically a superset of the Kubernetes, um, and it does a few other things that are really interesting. Uh, one is that you can specify an order. Um, and so when you have a bunch of different policies that are gonna be run, if you have more than one policy, you might wanna be able to specify what order in which they evaluate the network traffic. You don't really get that with Kubernetes network policy. Um, we also have the capability of defining uh, rules based on service accounts. And the benefit of doing that is that um, uh, service accounts are RBAC uh, controlled. And so you're able to manage like what labels are allowed to be there if anyone's allowed to change those labels on a service account, um, which is a bit stronger posture than working with the pods where people could kind of define and, and push their own labels. The other thing is on our selectors, our pod selectors, um, we're able to do uh, Boolean logic as well. Um, and so there's a lot more complexity or, or um, flexibility, I'd say, in terms of what we can query. Um, so in this case, the selector could be anything with the role equals DB or stage equals dev. Um, and so, uh, you know, Calico is a superset. There's other things that we provide as well that are all in the documentation, um, but this is going to, um, this is the reason why most of the cloud providers, including uh, Amazon EKS, have decided to embed Calico within their offerings. Um, the other thing to note is that you, know, you can enable application layer rules, which we call ALP or application layer policy. And then what that does is it enables you to define um, HTTP methods. And so in this case, um, it's able to connect to table slash star, which is probably some kind of a, an ID that would be specific um, to an account slash customers. And so we can even use, uh, you know, the wildcard in here, um, but this would say that the post is allowed. And in that case, um, it also infers a, a get a, a get and a put would not be allowed. Um, so uh, in order to enable application layer policy, um, you're going to deploy uh, Calico um, uh, along with um, along with Envoy. Um, and so it'll actually use Envoy to help with the filtering here. Um, the benefit of also using these is that you can automate CICD process. So uh, all of your security policies and rules, and, 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 and this can be used to define things uh, like um, you know, your PCI DSS compliance requirements in terms of isolation, uh, your FedRAMP compliance uh, isolation requirements, ISO 27001 and others, right? Um, and so what will happen though is that as you deploy new services into the environment, you're going to need to be able to whitelist what connections are allowed. And so, you know, these are basic YAML files that you can deploy along with any service. And so this gives you this policy as code model where uh, there's nobody who's manually configuring firewall rules and dealing with all that monkey business. Um, and so Calico is a, a great solution for that. Um, there's quite a bit on this slide, but um, the key point here is that, you know, generally when you start moving towards production, there are security controls that are gonna be required. And oftentimes teams try to use, um, kind of try to force a firewall into this model. Um, and, it, you know, it, it could even be, um, you know, virtual firewall or using, uh, um, using uh, security groups and whatnot. But those are relatively static approaches. And, um, you know, for these dynamic environments, you really require a cloud native approach. And that's what we're going to offer with uh, network policy and with Calico. And it's also completely free. All these other solutions out there for more of the traditional static environments are very, very expensive. Um, so the other thing to note as well, I'm gonna talk mostly about network policy today, but Calico is also um, a networking engine as well. And you can opt to use Calico networking instead of the AWS CNI. Um, and that can be beneficial in terms of uh, IP resource exhaustion, um, which is a common pain point. Um, but we also can run across multiple data planes. So, you know, while 
kind of our bread and butter and where most people are using us for is in a standard Linux networking plane. Uh, we can also connect to uh, Windows, the, the host networking service. And so you can manage um, network policies and your networking across mixed uh, environment clusters. And we also have a capability of running uh, eBPF, which for modern Linux kernels um, is, uh, is a very, very fast data plane to use. So I'm gonna show a demo here. And um, the great thing is that you're able to do this on your own. Um, there is documentation up on AWS that'll actually, I'm gonna walk through that as a demo today. And the reason why I wanna do that is it's, everyone can kind of see and understand the fundamentals, but then go to this resource online and actually practice it for, your, for yourself as well. Um, so I'm gonna to go to this page in a second here, but the, the use case that I wanna show is going to be um, this application, which has um, a client front end, which is gonna be connecting to the public internet. Then we're gonna have this, uh, this front end, like this business logic, and then it's gonna have a back end that's gonna be dealing with the data. And in order to kind of visualize this without spending too much time in kubectl and, and getting pods and showing you what's going on, um, we built a management UI so that visually I'll be able to describe what's going on. Um, so this application is called STARS. And what we wanna show is, you know, we've got this bad guy here um, and he's able to pop the client and what we want to do is we want to show that he's not able to move from the client directly to the back end. And so this is a simple use case, but something that we'd like to, to use for the demo today. Um, so what I'm going to do is grab that link. And you could just do a Google search for Calico EKS and you'll probably find the same link as well. Um, it looks like it's already open right here. Um, so this is right in the EKS documentation. And what it will do is it uh, will walk you through how to install Calico on EKS. Um, and basically, it's a couple of commands to make sure that it gets enabled. But, um, and so they actually list the commands here. And what we're going to do is first we're going to apply this manifest, um, which is going to install Calico on the cluster. So I've got a terminal window here. And I'll just go ahead and run this command. Okay, and Calico should be installed. We can get the daemon set. So Calico runs as a daemon set, which means that it's always gonna have one pod running on every node. Um, and so what we can see is uh, I've got two nodes out there. So it, we want it to be running on the two, and two nodes are ready. So it looks like we're up and running. It was very, very fast to get Calico uh, up and running on my EKS cluster. And this is my cluster I'm using today called Demo up here. So um, <clears throat> you can also delete it. There's some instructions here. So if uh, you'd like to clean up your cluster when you're done and you want to delete Calico, it's very, very quick to do that. Right here in the documentation, it actually walks you through the STARS policy demo, which is a demo I'd like to share today. And um, there are uh, front end, back end client management UI services, as I showed you um, in the slide here. And I'll show you a little bit about what those are. So we have, um, we have a client here. Um, and for each of these um, containers, they have a command that we're putting in here, right? And so what happens is that the client is actually going to be connecting um, to the front end, and it's also gonna be connecting to the back end at this status uh, URL. Um, likewise, the front end is gonna be connecting to, um, it's gonna be connecting to the, to the back end as well as the client and the back end. So basically all of these services are connecting to each other. And then the management UI um, is going to be um, exposed over this node port 9001. And it's going to be basically pulling everything that's in the environment 
and visualizing that for us. So this is the application I'm going to install. Um, and I'll just run the commands that are shown here. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and wait for these things to be in a running status. It looks like it's everything's running pretty quick today. It's great. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna do is, um, you know, I'd like to do some port forwarding to connect to that management UI so I don't have to open up all kinds of rules and everything on my cluster. And so there's a simple command here um, to help you with the port forwarding. And what this will do is it's going to forward 9001 to my local host. Um, so I can just grab this URL here, go to my local host, and there we go. So this is showing me the pods that are running. The C is for the client, F is for the front end, B is for the back end. And uh, what you can, you can see is that there's these uh, little white balls that are moving between one service to the next that indicates that these are packets that are being passed back and forth and so we can see that really here everything can talk to everything and so this is what we refer to as an open cluster there are no policies in place and any service that you have can connect to anything else even between namespaces um, so not a great security posture but really easy to get started and so um, what we'd like to do is first implement um, effectively um, a denial to, uh, to isolate these, um, these services. And so what's gonna happen is when I implement this deny all policy, actually I should probably show the policy. Um, and so, oh, this doesn't go on. I actually don't have the policy loaded up in here, unfortunately. Um, but uh, what, what this policy will do is it's gonna do a default deny. And when I run that, if I refresh this UI, what I should see is that the, since everything is denied inside the cluster, the UI can't even see any of the services that are running at all. So I just get this blank screen. I can't even find the client or the back end or whatnot, I can't probe. So uh, the first step that I want to do is to enable that um, UI uh, net network access to actually pull those services. And so that's going to be um, this couple of, uh, of uh, manifests here. So I'm going to run these. And at this point, if I refresh, I should see the services, but now the services aren't allowed to talk to each other. So these are all the potential paths, but as you see, none of the network communication that's being attempted is actually flowing through. And, and, and in this state, um, we're now in default deny. Any new service that I deployed to this environment uh, would be isolated. It wouldn't be allowed to connect to anything else until I explicitly um, allowed it. And that's what we're gonna do. So what we'd like to do is allow the client to talk to the front end and only the front end and the front end to talk to the back end, but certainly not the client to get directly to the back end, considering that this client is a web facing uh, microservice. And <clears throat> so what we'll do is we have this um, back end policy and that's the one I was going to show before. So um, the back end policy here says that if your role equals back end, that you're going to allow ingress from any pod um, labeled front end. And likewise, the front end is going to allow ingress from client. Um, and, and, and this is the front end one. And it's only going to allow port 80. So we'll go ahead and uh, execute this. This is the back end policy. And we should see now that the back end is allowing ingress from the front end. There we go. 
Now the next thing is to allow ingress to the front end from the client. And that would be the next that we type in. And there we have it. So while all these connections are being uh, attempted between all services, what we've done is with a couple of quick little commands and manifests, we've uh, actually uh, secured our cluster, defined which services are allowed to talk to which, and we're really in a zero trust security posture at this point, which is a very, very strong security posture. And then we've done this all with uh, free open source software. Um, one last thing is that if you'd like to go clean up your cluster, uh, there's a command that you can run here. It will delete all of the, all the pods and services and namespaces. And, uh, and then if you want to delete Calico as well, the command is up here at the top to delete Calico out of your cluster so you can clean things up. So we've effectively uh, blocked this potential bad actor from popping the client, connecting directly to the back end where we're dealing with sensitive data. So a couple of key takeaways here um, is that uh, you know, the, the means of doing security and on the network and, and segmenting your cluster is uh, called Kubernetes network policy. It's a fundamental um, requirement typically to run in production um, in, a, in a safe manner. Um, <clears throat> Calico network policy, uh, Calico, the engine will implement network policy for you if you want to use standard Kubernetes network policy, but it also is a subset of Kubernetes network policy and it'll give you a number of advanced policy features uh, that can help out. This is available out of the box by EKS. Um, so you just have to run the single command and it will be enabled on the cluster. Um, and it's also, you know, with the number of clusters that we're running out there, like this has been proven at scale. And there are some very large environments out there um, that are running their 5G networks on this, that are running things like IBM Watson on this. Um, there are just a mass scale, even like Yahoo uh, Japan is running on this. Um, and so there's hundreds of thousands of clusters that are out there running millions of nodes and it's something which is tried and proven and uh, it should work for you as well. Um, just kind of as a final uh, leave behind there is a enterprise version of Calico as well. It kind of steps us all up to the next level. A lot of what I was doing today was on the command line and using YAML files. Um, there are ways that you can do things like auto create all of your policies that you need for a cluster based on the current traffic. Um, that way kind of coming in and saying, hey, I need to segment my cluster, but I've got hundreds of microservices running. Like that's gonna be a lot of work to set that up. Calico Enterprise can help with things like that offers workflow. So one of these policies, if I had done a, a deny and potentially denied all DNS traffic, I could take down a cluster accidentally, or you might um, have a typo in a policy that does things that you don't intend it to do. So we offer things like the capability to run a, um, a policy in this permissive mode where it'll tell you what it's doing, but not actually enforce the traffic. And then uh, oftentimes in production environments and networking needs troubleshooting. Um, especially with microservices, using the network to communicate and get work done. So they're troubleshooting tools and, and it's all visual. Um, and there's uh, one addition to the network policy that we do, which is egress access controls with the, with the enterprise version, which means you can do things like integrate one individual pod to an AWS security group. Uh, you can't really do that otherwise, or um, you can uh, specify which, um, third party, like a Twilio API service, which pods you're allowed to connect to that and the others would not be allowed to. Um, and then finally, a lot of reporting. Um, if the security teams do have requirements around things like PCI, we can generate the reports and the formats that they're familiar with. Um, so that's a little bit about Calico Enterprise. If that's of interest, you can try that out for free at our uh, tegero.io slash trial. So I'm gonna pause there and I'm gonna open it up for any questions here. Let me just open up a Q and A panel. Looks like there has been a bunch in the chats. So let me see here.
hopefully you guys have been able to hear me. I said no sound earlier. Okay, that looks like when it was just kicking off. Um, so there was a question about how does eBPF that we have differ from OBS-DPDK. I'm, I'm not actually familiar with the OBS-DPDK, so I can't really answer that question. But um, that is a great one to put on the Calico users Slack group that we have, and our engineers do uh, do man that, that Slack group. Um, do you need to apply Calico on master as well as worker nodes? Um, no, you just, you, you, uh, the, so Calico is running on, uh, it's, it's running as a daemon set. Should be across the worker nodes. Uh, you can run it on your master as well to protect uh, things like API traffic and whatnot that's coming in. Um, it looks like the command line was not all that visible, uh, was one of the comments. I apologize for that. Next time I'll, uh, I'll try to make the font a little bit bigger. The good news is, is that all the commands that I walked through today are, uh, they're all up there on um, AWS's documentation. I was basically just copy and pasting today. So this question, if a team tries to push a firewall, is a valid setup to push your EKS cluster in a private subnet with no security groups, but network policies that protect the resources? and expose those resources by having an ELB, ALB point to Istio gateway or something. Yeah, I think that that would be, um, that would be a legitimate solution uh, for sure. Um, I'm just trying to think a little bit, uh, clustering private subnet with no security groups, but network policies to protect the resources. Yes, absolutely. And <clears throat> what you want to avoid is, is having things like hairpinning where they want the, where they want that firewall um, to actually, if they, if, if they want pod to pod traffic to route through that firewall, that's what's called hairpinning. And there's some challenges there um, that will severely hurt uh, performance of your application, the network. It makes things a little bit more complex to troubleshoot why. Um, and you also have to buy bigger firewalls in order to do that because they have to have the throughput to allow. So um, what you would uh, what you would put down here, uh, Curtis, is legitimate. It's a good solution. 